Hi, I'm Julia. Welcome to my channel, Sharing the Discovery. I'm happy to have you here. And today we're going to be talking about the Oxcart Man and what we did together as a family with my kids um, to kind of go a little bit in depth with um, the story of the Oxcart Man. A little bit about myself, I've coined the term freestyle homeschooler to describe what I do with my children um, on a daily basis in our homeschool. Um, it's not a curriculum, any one curriculum that we follow, but I kind of pull resources from all different sources and it comes together um, into a conglomeration of many different um, sources for a given topic. Um, the, re the reasons why we come to different topics are different. Um, I use certain resources to help uh, provide a foundation for what we do each week and month, which I'm hoping to make a video about very soon um, to kind of explain a bit more about how I structure um, the content that we use and also I follow where the interest takes us so if the children are asking about a specific topic and it is coming up more and more or if I don't have answers for it or if we don't have a book in the house that would give us a satisfactory explanation of why something is this way or about a certain animal or whatever it may be then I order books from the library and we kind of make a little unit study out of whatever that topic might be we read in depth and we discuss and Oftentimes, what's amazing about homeschooling for me is that things kind of like work together that I haven't even planned to put together. We come across certain things um, in our day-to-day -day activities or when we're out and about that's like, oh wait, you remember we just read about that or you asked about that and that connects. So I find that to be really fun and um, a kind of a validation for all of the planning that can happen and does happen on a daily basis, but when it comes down to it, it's our day-to-day -day life that um, we learn <laughs> by, right? It's, it's the day-to-day -day that informs um, our perspective. So one of the foundations of our freestyle homeschooling is um, Read Aloud Revival that's put together by Sarah McKenzie and her team. And each month, they pick out a picture book that is kind of like their picture book of the month. And this month, it's Oxcart Man by Donald Hall. And this is a neat story. It's a classic, if you're not familiar with it already, um, about a man who loads up his cart with all of the resources that his family has put together from the year and goes to market to sell. It has great lists of all the things that he loads up the cart with. Let's see, he packed a barrel of apples, honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbages, maple sugar, um, goose feathers, and it tells about how he sources all these things. And I mean, that's just part of the list. There's other things that he packs too. And then it, he comes to the market and he sells all of those items. And then he goes to the store and he purchases other items and he, um, brings them home to his family. So it's a wonderful um, book with great illustrations, a book about cause and effect, about how he um, made items, saved them, went to the market, sold them, and was able to purchase um, other items. And worth, there's a picture of his wife and daughter working hard to create new products to sell at the market. Right after we read that book, I called my children into an activity and said, hey, let's pretend that we're the ox cart man. Um, and so we went around our house and we um, kind of went through the story. I would read off um, the items that he packed in his cart and we would look around our house to find what item would most likely correspond with that item. So it was some one of the items was apples, so we grabbed a bag of apples and we put it in our little box um, cart. Um, other things were a little bit harder, like he had a bag of wool, so we grabbed some cotton balls and um, just different things like that we improvised. 
Um, and then um, I pretended to be a buyer at the market and my son and daughter um, pretended to be the sellers of the ox cart man in that case and I would come up and I would ask them for each of the things in turn and and would um, purchase their products that they had brought to the market and then they had a turn to come and purchase things I would pretend to be the seller just like the ox cart man went into the store to buy some products to bring back to his family um, they came and purchased some things for me so it was like a needle for his daughter's sewing um, a pot for his wife um, some peppermint candies and uh, oh a, a barlow knife for his son's whittling and so we kind of improvised with those things and they pretended to purchase from me and at the end the peppermint candy theme we had some leftover candy canes from last year so we all kind of had a enjoyed a, a nice snack from uh, that kind of coincided with the story there, peppermint, <laughs> peppermint candy canes. We also read the verse from Ecclesiastes. I have it printed out here. Ecclesiastes 3, let's see, yep, and um, about how there's a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal a time to tear down and a time to build. And the passage goes on and um, talking about how there's a time for everything and kind of providing these contrasts um, between the seasons. And we see that in the ox cart man, how there's a time to work and make the product. There's a time to sell. There's a time to plant. There's a time to pick up. Um, so Ecclesiastes was kind of just a great springboard for more discussion about how there's a timing for everything and how that can relate to our own lives as well. <clears throat> my children had a fun time too coming up with their own times for things. My daughter was very eager to suggest, oh, a time to vacuum or a time to eat cereal. So lots of suggestions coming from them about the day-to-day -day things that we have made times for and that there is a time for. In addition to the Ecclesiastes passage, we also looked at a couple of passages from Proverbs, um, which I can actually put in the screen down below the passages that we looked at. One of them was about um, the ant and how we can learn from the ant's hard work um, ethic and um, how not working in the right time and season will end up being a loss for us. And we can see in the example of the ox cart man that he worked in the right seasons and he applied himself at the right times for the right tasks and was able to gain a reward from them. Um, so kind of as a fun little jump off, we know that there knew that there was a cocoa melon song about the ants working. And I think it's actually an Aesop's fable as well about um, the grasshopper who said, no, 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 I'm not working and um, life is for fun, right? Life is, is, is just to enjoy. And he ended up uh, not having any food when the time came, when winter time came around. Um, and in the Cocomelon version of the song, um, the ants invite the grasshopper in to share their meal. But I don't think the original story actually had that. I think the grasshopper suffered for his, um, for his choice. Um, so just an interesting tie-in between, uh, you know, learning that work in the right time, the right place, the right season is, can be of benefit. I do want to take a minute to say that although the Oxcart Man was the recommended reading material for this month from Read Loud Revival, um, all of these ideas I put together and um, I didn't source them from Sarah McKenzie's blog. So I do uh, just want to make sure to make that differentiation. Um, say I'm not stealing anyone's ideas here. Another thing that we did, I was able to find um, a Reading Rainbow episode. I had ne never seen an episode, um, and it's from uh, PBS Kids. I was able to get it for free on Amazon Prime, uh, sign up for a free seven-day trial, and then I signed out of that again, and we were able to watch the episode together. It was about 25 minutes long about the Oxcart Man, and the um, host of the show, I think his name was LeVar, he went to Old Sturbridge Village um, because that is a historical museum set in the time period of the Oxcart Man. So we enjoyed watching the video and seeing the things that he was able to do. Um, uh, like he worked in a blacksmith shop and um, 
he bartered for different things. Um, it was just really interesting seeing a hands-on um, kind of a experience um, in a setting that the Oxcart Man would have lived in. And then what's even more fun is that we actually live very close to Old Ridge Village. So I was able to do a little research and there was a homeschool day coming up, which gives a discount to homeschoolers. So I um, purchased some tickets and we went to visit this week. We went to Old Ridge Village. Here's one of their maps. Um, there's so much to see and explore there. We were able to um, go to the musket demonstrations that happened um, in the afternoon. And the children loved visiting um, the different um, houses and exhibits that were available. Um, loved seeing the animals. We stopped by the pottery barn and the blacksmith shop, um, the sawmill, which wasn't working at the time, but even still looking at those big blades and checking out the water wheel and all of that was great fun. The Oxcart Man um, is also a great de depiction of different seasons of the year, especially of a New England year. I picked up um, Outside Your Window, a first book of nature, which details the four seasons in poem form. So we've actually been reading like maybe three poems from each season every morning. Um, Here's one we haven't gotten to yet, but rainbows. But you can see this gives a great um, example of the kind of illustration they are. They're very engaging illustrations, colorful. Um, here's one of the uh, tadpoles in, in the pond, the frogs, and their life cycle, very simply um, drawn out. This is comes from the summer section about um, Go visiting the ocean, the tide, the shell song. Lots of interesting things to um, remark on. Here's from the autumn section on worms and how worms are always working underground, doing their thing in the dark. Very, very valuable members of our ecosystem. And then the last section is titled Winter. There's some great um, thoughts in the winter poems, the snow song, we talked about how they worded some of these things. Um, listen and you can hear the quiet, as if every sound has been wrapped up and put away. In the morning you'll find the snow has kept a diary of things that happened when you were asleep. The animals and birds who ran about the garden have left a snowy record of their feet. So outside your window, a great resource for looking at each of the seasons, learning not just a, a science-y book, it's, it's a, a book that celebrates nature in, a, in, a, in an art form. To bounce off that season idea, um, I purchased a, a resource from Etsy and I would recommend this research source. I will link um, the, uh, yeah, I'll put the link in the description box for a calendar um, calendar time. <laughs> I was looking for something that would have like some Velcro that we could move around and kind of um, rearrange each month. So this is actually last month, October, but um, it came with a whole set of, of the months and you can change, uh, change it out. So it's just Velcro here. In the back you pull it off and you can change it. Um, you can change the dates obviously and rework those depending on what the dates, where the dates of the month fall. And then, um, so this will be great to help to learn about the months of the year. This is um, an activity sheet that was included that you can actually match up. You can take these um, velcro things off and you can match them up. Oh, January goes up here. So not only can you use these on your calendar, but you can use them as an activity page. And um, there's an activity page for the days of the week. Again, same idea. There's the problem here. And you can stick them up. The kids can learn by the um, uh, color. Um, there's a color code there. 
um, you can start to learn the days of the week. And then there's even a slot for today. Today is Thursday. You can put that right there. A great learning resource. It's very high quality. It's laminated really well. The Velcro is on um, really tight and strong. And the last um, page that was included with this learning bundle is the seasons of the year. And again, the same idea. The kids can match. Uh, summer looks like it would go over there and with all of them. Very much coincides with the ox cart man and the changing seasons and I thought I could bounce off of that and, and let's do this with the kids. Let's learn about the seasons of the year. Let's learn about the months of the year and the days of the year. And, and this resource is perfectly suited to that need of um, learning together. So I haven't yet introduced this to my kids. We've been doing the other activities. So this is kind of going to be for later in the month. As a part of using Read Aloud Revival and and um, using their um, recommendations for picture books in a month, I feel the just the space to use utilize the whole month and fill it with activities, either ones that come up or ones that I've planned. How can we tie it into the things that we're learning um, within that month that are related to that picture book? And it's really fun to see the possibilities that come up for learning and the possibilities that I have come up with myself and been able to introduce to the kids. Um, it's a really, really fun uh, learning journey. Um, um, to homeschool this way. So that concludes what I have to share about our learning journey with the Oxcart Man. Um, that by no means concludes the learning journey that we're on. In fact, we will quite possibly come across other learning resources or bring in other activities or come across other things that in the space of this month that we're able to pull in and tie to the Oxcart Man. But that gives an overview um, and hopefully it can be a like a springboard for anyone watching um, to be able to be inspired to go on their own learning um, discovery with uh, the book that they might be reading, the book of the month that they might be um, engaging in. And how can you make it um, more of a, a unit study, but it's more of an organic unit study rather than um, a, a, a planned out, a scheduled um, a study. It leaves space for questions, right? It leaves space for for the the process of discovery. Well, thank you for joining me um, for this short bit, and I hope that you'll check back again.